Okay, so the second paper is uh, towards tightly secure lattice shot signature and ID based encryption. Uh, the speaker is Chin Yin, Chin Yi Li. All right. So, uh, this, okay, okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Qin Yi. Uh, this is joint work with Xavier. Uh, okay, the, the title of our paper is, uh, is about tightly secure signature scheme and uh, IDE. So, uh, this, let me start with the uh, motivations. So our, we have two motivations. The first motivation is that uh, uh, currently there is, n there is no uh, both short, uh, there is no short Latin signature with uh, tight security reduction. Uh, and the second one is the currently we don't have a tightly secure lattice IBE without random oracles. So uh, we do have many uh, very nice technicals, uh, techniques for, uh, for obtaining uh, good lattice signatures and the lattice IBEs, but uh, none of them satisfy these two requirements, short and tight and tight IBE. So um, let me just quickly go over the definition of, uh, of the tight security. So, so usually, uh, I think most of people should be familiar with this uh, theorem, the template of the theorem, and uh, in particular, we care about this part. So if an adversary has a, an advantage epsilon, uh, we, we will give a reduction showing that uh, uh, we will have uh, this uh, advantage to break uh, some hard problems. And here, because this, this theta, uh, we will lose some, we will lose some uh, some some advantage here. So we want to for tight for tight reduction. We want to this uh, c, uh, theta to be as small as possible. Uh, so theta measures the tightness of reduction. So uh, to be more precise, uh, we uh, in in our uh, in our cryptographic schemes we have uh, sec uh, security uh, parameters lambda, and we sometimes in the security model we also we we, we also consider number of adversary queries. Which is Q. So by tight uh, by tight reduction, we mean that theta is a constant that independent of uh, a security parameter and the adversary query Q. And by loose reduction, the theta is depend uh, is uh, theta depends on the the Q. So um, so the reason why we want uh, tight reduction is um, of course in practice if the if the reduction is tight then we usually get uh, shorter security parameters, which usually gives us a uh, more efficient uh, uh, cryptographic scheme. And uh, in theory, of course, we want to show how, the hard, uh, how close the hardness of two uh, computations. So in theory, we, we want to show that how uh, the, show the hardness of two computational problem is closed. So uh, this uh, the motivation. So this is uh, in practice this is more important. So uh, this is our result, and we sh we, we we give a tightly secure short signature lattice signature uh, and IBE scheme without random oracle from some uh, cons conservative lattice assumptions and. Uh, a concrete uh, instantiation of a uh, pseudorandom function. So uh, this is not general. In our, in our construction, we have to explicitly use some PRF. So this is the result. So uh, I won't read them, but uh, just look at this. So our reduction is uh, tight just by looking at this. So we have two here. So theta is two here. So uh, OK, uh, let's go to our techniques. So here, 
this signature, uh, well, I will show, show you my technique uh, through the signatures. So signatures, we have this uh, three algorithms and we need uh, correctness. So, and uh, in the security model, we consider in this uh, exist, uh, existential unforgeability against the choosing message attack, meaning that essentially adversary can choose many messages adaptively and uh, to obtain the corresponding signatures. And finally, the adversary uh, will try to for, try to make uh, come up with a forgery, uh, such uh, come up with a valid forgery, and uh, uh, where the the message hasn't been signed by by the uh, by by the challenger before. So, um, so uh, here is our method. So uh, we kind of like uh, combine lots of uh, nice techniques, but not necessarily related to signatures and IBE. So, um, so first, uh, the, the, the first technique we are using is this uh, cuts one's magic bit. So uh, I use this magic bit. This magic bit comes from uh, Michelle Abdallah's uh, talk a uh, few years ago. So cuts one's magic bit for obtaining tightly secure signature scheme for full domain hash, fun uh, full domain hash signatures. So this is kind of inherent uh, in the random oracle model, but we want to do in the standard model. Uh, also, uh, since we are doing, uh, we are constructing something from lattices, we will use this very powerful uh, tour called the two-sided lattice trapdoors. And uh, uh, our, our signature scheme and IBE scheme is essentially inspired by Boyan's signature, which has already been mentioned uh, in, in the last, uh, last talk. And finally, we, we oh, sorry, finally we, uh, we will use this uh, very nice, very nice GSW fully homomorphic encryption and uh, this uh, fully key homomorphic encryption in the context of, uh, of H FHE and uh, attribute based encryption for circuit. So we combine all of them in a non trivial way. So, um, so firstly, um, Cat's One's magic bit. So Cat's One's magic bit is an unpredictable bit, it's just the one bit and associated with every message. So usually we, uh, we would like to uh, set up this, uh, this value by using a pseudorandom function. So for each message we have, a, because the pseudorandom function is deterministic, so we have one bit here. All right, so the idea of the cut one's uh, magic, uh, magic bit is that in the real scheme, each message has exactly two signatures. And uh, the signer, because signer has a signing key, he can produce this, uh, he can produce both of them, but uh, for security reason, we only give one of them. So what happens in the security proof is that uh, uh, in the, during the query phase, the simulator is able to create the signature which is associated with this magic bit, but not another one. So, but this, 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 does, this fact does give us the uh, advantage that uh, all the side inquiries can be answered because at least we can answer one of the two signatures. So during the forgery case, a simulate, the, the adversary would output a forgery, but, but uh, he doesn't know, essentially, he, because, because this, uh, uh, this, uh, unpredicted, uh, this bit is unpredictable, so adversary doesn't know which one he should forge. So with uh, essentially uh, one half, uh, one, uh, one, one half pr probability, uh, the adversary will, will choose a, uh, a forgery such that a simulator cannot produce. Then s simulator can, can use that to solve the underlying hard problems. Okay, so um, the next technique is the two-sided lattice trapdoor. So two-sided two la uh, two lattice trapdoor comes from this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, Trapdoors for for this uh, for this problem, uh, which we have already seen from last talk. So here the this uh, problem, we are giving a matrix A. We are asked to find a short short solution sigma such that A times sigma equals to zero. Here of uh, we have to, the the key point here is that sigma has to be small, otherwise there are lots of uh, solutions. So if if, so here, the, the, the thing is that if we choose this A uniformly random, then finding short sigma is hard. This is the cis problem. 
And on the other hand, some, somehow we can use some algorithm to generate uh, uh, a matrix A along with a trapdoor. And using this trapdoor, we can, we can efficiently find a pretty good solution here. So the idea of, this, uh, of, the, of, of our signature is, uh, is from this GPV style signature scheme where uh, a trapdoor T of A will serve as a signing key and uh, a valid solution sigma will serve as a signature. So that's the general idea. So um, here is the description of the two-sided lattice trapdoor. So uh, two-sided lattice trapdoor, we have two sides. So we have this left side, we have the right side. So we construct, somehow construct this uh, function, uh, this, this matrix F like this. So R here is, uh, is the low loan and the H is the scalar. So the thing is that uh, if we have, so usually we will have a trapdoor for this matrix A. If you have a matrix, uh, if you have trapdoor for A, then it doesn't matter what, what, what H you are going to pick. Uh, you will be able to have trapdoor for F, then you can, you can sign messages. And uh, in this, uh, uh, and in the simulation, in the proofs, we, we, will, we won't be able to have a trapdoor for A, but uh, we, will, we will need to, we can somehow use the structure of the uh, right side, right hand side to, to do something. Like for instance, if H is not zero, although we don't have a trapdoor. <laughs> So sorry, so sorry. So, so, so here for right trapdoor, if H is not zero, we will be able to have a trapdoor for the whole thing, for F. If H is zero, then we lose the trapdoor, then we cannot sign. But if we cannot sign, on the other hand, on the other hand, we can, we can, we can exploit the adversary's forgery to solve this problem. So. That's the idea. So the idea. So this idea has been used uh, used in this uh, Boyan signature scheme, uh, which uh, which uh, you have seen in last talk. So this Boyan signature scheme looks like this. Here, this uh, right hand side matrix depends on the message. So for each message, you will get a different uh, right hand. You will get a different metric matrices in the right hand side. And uh, because the signer has a, has a trapdoor for this uh, left, uh, uh, right, uh, 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 left hand side, then he can always uh, generate a signature. So, um, and the proof idea is the following. So in a security proof, uh, we won't be able to have trapdoor for A. That's, 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 that's a safe challenge. But somehow we can create, uh, right, uh, create our matrix in the right hand side as this form, so this is the hash function of m. H i can be seen as a constant. So here m is uh, depends on um, for, for for different m we will get different uh, r m, and the r m is short. And in the simulation, the right hand side is statistically close to the right hand side in the real scheme. So that's the simulation. And the idea of this proof is uh, is precisely the idea of the two-sided trapdoor. So Applying this principle, if h, h, of, uh, h of m is zero, then we lose, we lose the trapdoor from the right-hand side, but uh, we, can, we can manage it to solve uh, this problem. And if, if h of m is not zero, then by using this right hand, uh, the trapdoor from the right-hand side, we can manage to, uh, to sample uh, signatures. So idea is here, simulator hopes, hopes that for all side inquiries, h of m is non-zero, so we can, we can answer side inquiries. This happens with roughly this probability. And uh, for, for in the forgery case, we do hope that the adversary's forgery m makes h of m to be zero, and uh, this happens with, uh, with uh, this probability. And to put them together, we get a somewhat loose reduction here. So polynomial Q of Q. So our idea is the, is the following. So we, we incorporate this magic bit in, into this two-sided trapdoor. 
So instead of using this, uh, this hash function here, we just put our, 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 our magic bit uh, inside. So essentially, this part is going to be just one bit. So depending on whether it's 0 or 1, if it's 1, then we have, right hand, we have a right, uh, right trapdoor. If it's 0, we, have a, uh, we don't have trapdoor. But here, we have two matrices. So the verification key consists of two matrices. So we will be able, to, uh, we can make sure that uh, we always have a, have a, have a trapdoor for either this guy or this guy. So, um, so by doing this, as required by the cards once idea, so we can essentially generate exactly one here. I quote one because here essentially we are considering a, a valid signature from one set. <laughs> Uh, so here it's not just one, but from a set of signatures. So we can generate signatures for, for, this, matrix, for this matrix, but not for this matrix. Because we, we, we have trapdoor for, for this guy, but we don't have trapdoor for this guy. So this allows us to answer all the side inquiries. And uh, in, the forgery, in the forge case, because this B, this BM, if you look at it here, this BM star is, uh, to, uh, is unpredictable. So um, essentially, adversary has no idea which one he, he should forge. Then with essentially this probability, his forgery gives uh, give us uh, power to solve this. So um, of, oh, OK. So, the, this this is good. This is good. But but the thing is that uh, uh, it seems that uh, because this uh, this uh, magic bit is uh, is the output of a PRF, how uh, how can we embed this PRF inside this structure? I mean, in Cat's one's original design, this part, the functionality of this part is done by using Radom Oracle. But we don't want to use Radom Oracle. So what we want to explicitly in, embed this PRF inside. So. Um, Oh, so we can. So here is the here is the not, uh, is the next step. We can use the. Uh, we want to we want to embed the PRF. In, and and come and somehow evaluate the PRF, inside uh, into this matrix. So, um, by looking at this. So so here the thing is that the PRF can be expressed by, uh, by a small depth circuit Boolean circuit. Uh, Usually, we have a many good candidates of PRF. They have a very low depth uh, uh, implementation. So here is the circuit. We assume we have this circuit. And this guy looks like a cipher test of the fully homomorphic encryption of uh, GS GSW fully homomorphic encryption, or the public key of the fully key homomorphic encryptions. So, so we can apply the, the, the uh, homomorphic evaluation uh, algorithm from these two papers to, to embed the PRF inside. So, um, so here, uh, so uh, we can express the, uh, so suppose, uh, so in this, uh, in this uh, GSW FHE or the uh, fully key homomorphic encryption system, we can give in these two kinds of matrices where v, uh, where u and v are input of a logic gate, and the w is the output of a logic gate, we can use the technique from these two papers to deterministically compute a unique matrix A w, such that A w has this form, and of course R R R w has low norm if R u and R v has low norm. So I won't I won't go to the details, but uh, j j just believe me, we can we can evaluate the gate by gate by doing this kind of thing. So what happens is that we are going to express this PRF as a Boolean circuit with binary input. So our first input is the is the secret key of the of the of the PRF. So we encrypt each bit of the PRF key by by doing this. And uh, we encrypt the message of the of uh, our, we encrypt the message by doing this. So essentially, this is CMI and the BKI. They are cipher test of the of the GSW FHE scheme. So um, by using this uh, using this matrices, we can and and this evaluation evaluation method, we can. We can take as this, this matrices as input, and we can get this, this guy. 
this is what we want. So this, this is the idea in the proof, and uh, this is our real scheme. So in our real scheme, there is no PRF, there is no PRF key inside this BI, uh, BKI, BKT, or C0, C1, but in the proof, we, are, we, will, uh, we, will, use, we will embed the, the, secret, uh, the secret key and message inside of them. So the system is, lo looks like this. So in the real system, as you can see, we have a trapdoor for this uh, A, for this uh, A. So if you look at it here, we have a trapdoor for A. Then we have a right, uh, left. Uh, we have a left uh, trapdoor. Then we can all the the signer can always produce uh, uh, signatures, but uh, in need uh, uh, he will only output one signature, exact one signature, uh, based on this magic bit, not two. He he can produce two, but uh, he won't. So. So here is the is the key point. Uh, only one of them is is gonna be issued. So uh, by the similar uh, idea of uh, from from these papers, uh, GPV signature and IBE and ABB10 IBE and uh, this uh, Boyan signature, we we can we can turn this uh, uh, signature scheme into a into an IBE scheme. Essentially, because we are not. To, uh, we are not throwing into new randomness during our signing algorithm. Our signing algorithm, uh, um, so apart from the message, there is no more. Uh, so we don't randomize the message like uh, what, what people did uh, by using common hash function or something like that. So here, we can uh, we manage to construct the IB scheme just directly from the signature scheme. So here is the, here is the idea. So in the key generation, the key, the uh, identity key in our IB scheme um, are essentially the signature, the signatures. So for each identity, we will have two, two identity keys, but we only give one. And the two, to input message, we are going to use, a, we are going to construct the two, this kind of so-called dual regiv uh, encryption scheme. So we, we construct two cipher tests, uh, two cipher tests. And, uh, um, and to decrypt, of course, we only have one, one key. So maybe this key works for this guy or works for this guy, but not both. So the decryptor has to try, has to try. So we, we probably we need to uh, put some redundancy in the cipher test. Okay, so here is something I want to, uh, I, want, I need to mention is that uh, uh, if you look at the Cat Swan's paper, uh, the, 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 they, they use this PRF uh, to, to, to make a, a signing process stateless. If they don't use PRF, then of course they get a really tight reduction, but the signing process has to be stateful. And uh, another thing I need to mention is that because here we, we need to explicitly use uh, some concrete PRF, so we need to, if, we, if, if you are considering this lattice based, pure lattice-based construction, we will need to use these uh, uh, PRFs. So, but these PRFs, they, they need to require slightly strong LWE assumption. So, and uh, last but not least, I should mention that uh, our system is not efficient. It's actually quite inefficient, but, uh, so we actually don't gain efficiency, efficiency from this tight reduction. So, uh, but here I, I need to see that uh, uh, if you really want to get, so it's kind of a little bit awkward, but uh, but if you really want to get an efficient IBE, what 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 we have is that uh, you should pick up this uh, selectively secure IBE systems and then do this so-called complex leveraging. So essentially, you have in the security proof, you have this uh, selective security model. Adversary will commit your uh, his challenge identity, and as a simulator, you just you you you, you just guess that identity. Of course, the identity space is very big, so you lose something. But uh, it turns out, uh, by doing this uh, complex leveraging, you, you get uh, really good uh, real-world efficiency than this uh, natural, natural, naturally proved uh, adaptively secure IBE schemes. So, but, uh, in, uh, but to do this complexity leveraging in the real world, you should, uh, you should really uh, consider, you should really uh, calculate your parameters carefully. Oh. And uh, um, you should consider these parameters real, really, uh, really carefully and uh, 
after doing this, you still get uh, efficient, uh, adaptively secure uh, IBE or maybe signature scheme in the in the standard model. So um, this is also mentioned by Hoi Takeaway in his talk. So there is a practice and the theoretical gap there. So to conclude, we have uh, we we combine. We combine this. Uh, uh, we combine lots of uh, nice uh, idea from uh, very different contexts. So we we, we use this Katz one's uh, idea for proving uh, full domain hash signatures in the red Morocco model. We use this uh, lattice trapdoor. We use this uh, nice fully homomorphic encryption idea, and uh, we obtain uh, a, a signature scheme with uh, short uh, signatures and tight security reduction, and uh, our IB scheme. Uh, achieve tight security and unbounded collision in the standard model in the first time. So, so um, yeah, that's uh, that's my talk. So thank you. Any short questions or comments? Hey, uh, oh. uh, first of all, uh, very nice talk. Thanks. Uh, so I, I s s seen that uh, you presented it in a very abstract way. So yeah. you presented, uh, you know, this technique of uh, cuts uh, and uh, Wang. Wang, and then there is this uh, very cool idea of the encryption scheme, uh, the fully homomorphic encryption scheme. Uh, I would like to ask you uh, if you know that this thing can be abstracted away from the lattice uh, setting to a more general setting, or there is some point of this construction in which you really rely some sp specific property of the uh, lattice assumption okay I think uh, the, the the evaluation part of the uh, of the PRF is, uh, is the only f only thing we can do from lattices because uh, from like a uh, discrete log we don't know how to do this uh, fully homomorphic uh, evaluation or fully homomorphic encryption essentially Uh, I think perhaps if you use something like a ring LWE, I think probably you can do the similar theme, but uh, uh, yeah, but uh, this is not, yeah, 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 thanks. Okay, so let's thank the speaker again. So the third paper is